But not long ago, you know, on one of the shows that I watch, this young woman in Alaska married. You know, they, they have livestock for their sustenance. She became so attached to this one animal that she couldn't kill it. She raised it from the time it was a baby. Can you imagine Mary raising Jesus from the time he was a baby, knowing that his slaughter was about to come? Just not knowing exactly when. Only the heart of a mother could, could, could sustain that pain. That fear of not, just not knowing when it was going to happen. She witnessed by herself the adversity that Jesus faced in life and in ministry. It wasn't easy for Jesus. She witnessed the fulfillment of, of, a, of prophetic words like he would be despised and rejected of men. Joseph wasn't around for that. Mary did it alone. And she believed for her son. She nurtured him. She had to have raised him up and in one way or another helped prepare him for his destiny. But to the very, very end, Mary faithfully stood for her son. But just imagine the joy in her when Jesus' life was restored. Huh? When God faithfully brought forth a new creature from the old, can you see and imagine the joy in the heart, in the face, in the life, in the actions of Mary? How many mothers have stood and believed for their sons and daughters? This reminds me of a program that I saw on TV not too long ago where a man's sailboat went down and it was in the Atlantic miles and miles offshore but he had a little lifeboat and that lifeboat was equipped with what's called an EPIRB which is an electronic device that's activated when it, when it comes into contact with salt water and it sends out not only a light so that he can be seen by planes in the dark, but a, a satellite signal so that they can act actually find his location. Friends, that lifeboat sustained him until the Coast Guard could rescue him. So many times mothers serve as their children's lifeboats. They hold their child up. They support them. They sustain them. Until Jesus can come along and rescue them. Jesus is their Coast Guard cutter. Amen? They're the lifeboat, but... Friends, they're all that stands, like that lifeboat. They're all... That thing was all that stood between that man and the sharks in the water. All that stood between life and death, just like mothers, are all that stands very often between their children and certain destruction. And friends, it's the Lord that's that beautiful, gleaming Coast Guard. I'll never forget how happy I was. One of the first cruises we ever took. <laughs> we, we were going into Jamaica. <clears throat> I don't mean Queens. And, and they had a big meeting. If you were going to get off the ship, you had to go to this ballroom. And they had a big meeting, and they had all these officers from the ship. And they're telling you, warning you, about all the things that could happen to you when you get off that ship in Jamaica. They were warning you not to buy anything illicit because there are police, and if they arrest you, you're going to be sitting in a jail in a foreign country, and the ship is going to leave without you. 
Now, I'm thinking, isn't this wonderful? I paid for this. <laughs> well, as the ship entered into the depths of the port to dock, I looked, and there was a huge Coast Guard cutter there with the American flag flying on it. <laughs> for the first time in my life, I was like, oh my God, oh, look at that, it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Friends, this is, this is what salvation looks like to that person who's in that lifeboat faced with certain destruction, who's being upheld and sustained only by the prayers and faith of a praying, believing mother. And along comes Jesus in the midst of all this. Listen, I know from experience. There are times in your life when Willpower is won't power. It ain't going to do it. You know how many times I told myself I was going to start a diet? And it was always on Monday. And then it would be next Monday. And you know how many times when I was doing things I shouldn't have been doing that I would tell myself and anybody else that was concerned, I can stop anytime I want. The only one I was deceiving was myself. And then I reached a place where it really came down to life and death. It came down to sink or swim. But there was lots of sharks in the water. My wife's prayers and faith were the lifeboat that sustained me. And then along came this Coast Guard cutter, gleaming with the flag of the kingdom flying. Amen. And out came this hand of Jesus Amen. that was able to rescue me. Do you know that that's what sozo or salvation means? It means rescue. You can be, listen, there are many times in this life when you not only can, but will find yourself in situations that you just can't get the control over. I mean, some people can't stop drinking, some people can't stop drugging, some people can't stop porning. Today, that's a, do you know that's one of the biggest problems facing the American culture today, is pornography? With the, with the accessibility of all that junk through uh, desktops, laptops, iPads, iPhones. I mean, you can get pornography any place you want it now. It, and it's addicting, church. There are so many times and places and reasons why we need that hand of Jesus. Yeah. And it, don't be ashamed if you can't do it alone. This is why God has something called grace. Yeah. It's the power and the ability to get the victory over something that previously would have just held you captive and ravaged your life. Yeah. Thank God for mothers. Your vessels that carry that very, very special anointing. Friends, how many prayers of how many mothers have sustained the lives of sons and daughters until Jesus could rescue their lives from destruction? Church, there, there is one devil. But there's many, many demonic entities with assignments to rob God's children of their health, their hopes, their dreams, their present, their future, their joy, their peace, and so much more. But as it says in 1 John 4 and 4, listen now. Ye are of God. You, you're of God. It says ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world you can do anything but you can't necessarily do it alone you need that Christ in you Christos in you the anointing in you upon you you need the power of God 
Friends, the enemy may have stolen days from you and weeks and months and, and years. He may have stolen blessings and finances and hopes and dreams and health, but fear not. The enemy is now under our feet. Amen. Did you hear what I said? So we need to stand and believe for the promised restoration. What restoration am I talking about? Now you can look at that flyer that I put in your bulletins. And the reason I printed it out for you is because very few of you are going to be walking around with the complete Jewish Bible in your hands. But Joel 2, 25 through 27, says the following. I will restore to you the years that the locust ate. Now, this isn't talking about bugs. This is talking about things, circumstances, demons, principalities, powers, habits, addictions, bad business deals. Whatever the enemy can loose your way to steal from you, this word is saying, I'm going to restore it to you. God is saying, I will restore to you the years that the locusts ate. The grasshoppers, the shearer worms. They're called shearers because they, they bite it like, like beavers. They just chew through and destroy everything. The cutter worms, same thing. He says, my great army that I sent against you. Verse 26, uh, let me just share quickly. We've been examining a lot of this kind of stuff, you know, where destructive things are attributed to God. And in our Bible study, which I would encourage you to attend, we've been ex examining that. And understand that in those days that the Old Testament scriptures were written, people did not have a good understanding of Satan. They didn't have a good understanding. Everything was attributed to God. If something good came, it was from God. If something bad came, that had to be from God too. God doesn't afflict his people. These wicked things came along because people chose to go wicked ways and do wicked things. But God said, it don't matter because I love you and I'm going to restore to you everything that that enemy has stolen from you. Oh, come on. Give him a praise for that, will you? Verse 26, he says, you will eat until you are satisfied. Oh, praise God. I'm looking forward to doing that after the service today. I'm going to eat until I'm satisfied. Praise God. It says, and we'll praise the name of Adonai, your God who has done with you such wonders. So you're going to eat it until you're satisfied, and all you're going to do is keep giving praise to God. That's what Adonai means, by the way, the Lord. You're going to keep giving praise to the Lord, who has done with you such wonders. Your wonders. You're going to sit and say, wow, how could this? Look at my life. Look at where I was as opposed to where I am. And I... And, you got to wonder how I got here. But the reason that it says that you'll be praising God is because you're going to make the right conclusion. God did it. I got where I am today only by the grace of God. Oh, uh, friends, don't ever turn down the help of God. Don't ever refuse the grace of God. It's the only thing that will get you to where he wants you to end up. Oh, bless the Lord. Verse 27, he says, You will know that I am with Israel. Now, it says, some might think, well, well, that's for Israel. Well, so are you. Because according to the New Testament Scriptures, we have been made one with Israel. All right? We've been grafted into that olive tree so that the blessings of Israel have become the blessings of believing Gentiles. Amen? So the promises God made to them, he's made to you. You'll know that I'm with you and that I am Adonai, your God, and that there is no other. Then my people will never again be shamed. 
never again be shamed. Church, through Joel, his prophet, the Lord encourages us to expect two very important things, restoration and restitution. Restoration, say it with me, restoration and restitution. Praise God. And, and the Lord would encourage us to expect restoration and restitution of everything stolen from us and from our loved ones. Everything stolen through abandonment. Everything stolen through divorce. Everything stolen through evil influences. Friends, evil influences are everything. We've got to be so careful who we hang out with. Because, you know, there's a saying, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. When you're hanging out in a bar, guess what you're going to do? What everybody else in the bar is doing. A lot of things they shouldn't be doing. And I'm not just picking on people in bars. There's all kinds of places we can go and things we can do and associations we shouldn't have. Somewhere along the line, we've got to say, is this the life I've chosen for myself? Or am I under wrong influences? And then have the gumption. How's that for a word from one of the Westerns? Yeah, you've got gumption. You've got to have the gumption to say, I ain't doing this no more. Because this is, this is destructive to my own life. Where am I going? Where am I headed? Wrong choices. Another contributor. Huh? To, to lives going down the tubes. So many of us can just make wrong choices, adopt wrong values. Now, understand that I went to college. I graduated high school in 1969. So these were crazy times. This is when revolution was beginning in the streets of America, on the college campuses of America where every traditional value had to be challenged or you aren't worth your weight. Friends, we have to expect restoration and restitution because wrong values steal from us, wrong choices, evil influences. How about sickness and disease, addictions and compulsions, crime? Friends, God has promised us restitution and restoration from every ploy that we've ever fallen victim to. And church, not only must the wicked release and restore, did you hear that? The wicked have to release and restore. But in addition, they must also pay back with interest. Church, you've got to get this, because if you don't, you'll never get back what the enemy's stolen from you. Listen to this verse from Proverbs 6, verse 31 in, in the New Living Translation. It says, speaking of the thief, right? Didn't Jesus say the thief comes to steal? Yes, he did. It says, but if he's caught, he must pay back seven times what he stole. That's 700%. If he stole 100 from you, he's got to give back 700. It says, even if he has to sell everything in his house. It's time, church, that we demand what's rightfully ours, that we expect what's rightfully ours. It's time that we pillage the, the enemy's house. It's time that we fleece the devil like he's been fleecing the flock for all these years. Church, I, I mentioned last week, and I'm going to mention it again, that our faith in the Lord does not make us immune to the challenges and the adversities of life. But it does make us victorious over the challenges and the adversities of life. You've got to know that. And you've got to know the difference. There is an enemy. I mean, 1 Peter 5, 8 through 11 says this. Again, from the New Living Translation. It says, stay alert. Watch out. 
For your great enemy, the devil, he prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Listen now, verse 9. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world, listen, is going through the same kind of suffering you are. Just because you belong to a church, just because you prayed a prayer of salvation, doesn't mean the enemy isn't going to be gunning for you. But what that means is that in the end, you're victorious over him. That means somebody's under somebody's foot and you're not on the bottom. The devil is under your feet. Amen? Now listen. Verse 10 says, in his, in his kindness, God called you. This is powerful. In his kindness, God called you. You, you want to hear what God called you to do? He called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Jesus Christ. So after you've suffered a little while, yes, there are times in life you're going to go through stuff. There are times in life when you're going to experience discomfort, when things aren't going to be just perfect. huh? It says, but after you've suffered a little while, he will restore. He will restore. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you may have lost, he is going to restore you. It says he'll restore, he'll support, he'll strengthen you, and he will place you on a firm foundation. All power, verse 11, to him forever. Amen. Church, you may have gone through it for a while. I certainly went through it for a while. But hear me when I tell you, restoration is coming, child of God. Amen. You hear what I just said? Yeah. Restoration is coming. Yeah. The day of restoration is coming. Yeah. He will restore you, he said. He will support you. He will strengthen you. Hear me when I tell you, you can do it. Yeah. You with him have the victory. Yeah. Now, church, he said that he has called you that means that what he's called you to is now part of your destiny. He's called you to share in his glory. Oh. Now this word glory, it's the Greek word doxa, D-O-X-A. And you know what it means? It says that he's called you to share in his excellence. God has called you to share in his majesty. Oh, come on. Do you know you're majestic? Do you know that you're excellent? That you, you are called to share God's own excellence and majesty. His brilliance, his splendor, thus able to operate in his power and in his privilege. Ooh. Friends, this is what God has called you to. Friends, for so many of us, our mothers have been our lifeboats. They've kept us afloat until our rescuer arrives. And for all of us, Jesus is our salvation. It's he who rescues us. It's he who heals us. It's he who mends us. It's he who prospers us. And it's he who gives us the ultimate victory and ultimate restoration. So, believing mothers, stand. Stand as expectant mothers. To needy children, stand fast as expectant children. Remembering this that your God is able and that your God is willing no matter what things might look like. Would you all stand with me?
Worship team, you want to come?